Humans can make 40 distinct spoken sounds. Early societies from all corners of Earth combined these sounds to form words that expanded on our basic grunts and hisses, revolutionizing communication. But each society, evolving independently from all others, created different words to indicate the same concepts. These differences among languages were magnified further when writing was invented. Not only were the spoken words different, but the pictorial representations, the alphabets, were different too. 24 unique written languages remain in use today, and each has its own approach to transforming spoken words into print. We write left to right, or right to left, or up to down, each letter or character representing a sound, a syllable, a word, or an entire story. English is one of our newest languages, developed about 600 years ago. It's a rich language, having absorbed countless important words from other cultures. That makes it one of the best spoken languages, but with its melange of sources, each with unique spelling rules, it's also one of the worst written languages. English spelling is so unintuitive and inconsistent that they have to hold events all over the country to see if anyone can do it. Mosaic. Mosaic. You have three seconds. We don't have this problem with numbers. There are no competitions where we ask contestants to write the number for 14,698 or 3.07 or negative 2 because there's only one obvious answer. On the other hand, there are a thousand ways to spell the 40 spoken sounds in English versus 150 ways in Spanish. Clearly, we can do better. The words on this screen make sense to you because you've grown up with them, or you took English as a second language later in life. In either case, you probably got a headache learning to read and write English because there are more exceptions than rules. In the late 1800s, George Bernard Shaw pointed out just how strange English spelling was by posing a question. How would one pronounce this word, G-H-O-T-I? His answer was fish. Why? Well. The GH can be pronounced like an F, as in rough, the O can be pronounced like I, as in women, and the TI can be pronounced like a SH sound, as in nation. English does have an advantage over other languages. It's concise. Translate any document from Spanish, French, German, or Russian into English, the result will be 25% shorter. And the building blocks for the words are attractive enough, Observe this 26-card hand of squiggles we've been dealt, from which we spell our words. It's how we cobble them into words that causes problems. Your first clue that something's wrong is when you open up a dictionary. Any dictionary. The source of spelling, pronunciation, and meaning. This book does a fine job of describing what a word means, if you can find it because you already kind of know how to spell it, which defeats the whole purpose. But to describe how to pronounce a word, it sometimes uses letters and symbols that aren't in the word to begin with, and some characters that aren't even in the alphabet. And there's no consistency. We looked up how to pronounce the word pronunciation in three different dictionaries and got three different pronunciations. Why so complicated? Well, let's start with the consonants. B, C, D, F, G, H, J, K, L, M, N, P, Q, R, S, T, V, W, X, Y, sometimes. Uh, why only sometimes? Does it take vacations? And Z. We sometimes stick consonants into words and don't even pronounce them. Why is there a GH in neighbor? And where's the P sound in psychology, the G sound in sign, the B sound in dumb, the L sound in talk, or the W sound in sword? I guess you can get used to anything. Almost as bad as silent consonants is having a consonant with two possible sounds. At least in the case of the C in cool and city, you can imagine a rule that when followed by an O, a C is pronounced like a K, and when followed by an I, it's pronounced like an S, but the G in genuine and geyser? It's followed by an E in both examples, so you have to read a few more letters to see if it reminds you of anything you've ever seen before, before you can even pronounce the first letter. That's bogus. By the way, the C has a few more tricks up its sleeve. A solo C is tuned to the hard CH CH sound in cello, and doubled Cs give that same sound in bocce. 
it pairs with I to become the sh sound in vivacious. And here's a two-tone consonant pair, the th, theft, then, within, wither. Beginning of the word or middle of the word. Might be a hard sound, might be a soft sound. Who knows? How about three sounds for the ch? No rules possible because the next two letters are identical. Ch charm, sh charade, k character. Now for some problems with vowels in no particular order. A, E, I, O, U, and Y, sometimes. Again with the sometimes. So we've got five and a half of these buggers. These words look like they should rhyme, but they don't. There's a short O, the ah sound in bomb, a long O, the O sound in comb, and a long U, the U sound in tomb. The OMB sound shouldn't change just because the prior consonant changes. Book, boot, blood. Now, the double O also has three possible sounds. Not logical. There are better ways to get those sounds and a better use for the double O's. Here are three more words that look like they should rhyme. Goes, does, shoes. Long O, short U, and a long U sound. The U has four possible sounds, maybe more. Making one vowel do four jobs is asking a lot from the vowel and even more from the reader. Among these four words, we've got a short U, cup, a long U, duke, the sound of a Y and a long U together, cute, and the sound of a schwa, put. More about that one later. Here are some word pairs that should rhyme, but inexplicably don't. Wind, mind, dull, bull, cord, word, soul, foul, wallet, mallet, cork, work, speak, stake, lost, post, some, home, wasp, grasp, how, low, mint, pint, lice, police, Range, orange, science, conscience, age, image, mirage. Adding a syllable up front shouldn't change the sound of the root word. Here's an odd one. Start with here, then add a T or D, and you get heart and herd. The EA sound changes in two different ways, depending on the added letter, which doesn't even touch the EA. Our rules are so arcane, we need to make up clever poems to help children learn them. I before E, except after C, or when sounded as A, as in neighbor and way. Oh yeah? What about height and C's? They don't fit the rule. Here we have a different issue. The suffixes in independent and consonant are pronounced the same, but spelled differently. Do I choose the E or the A? It's 50-50, and I get them wrong every time. Shouldn't have to. It's not pronounced independent and consonant. It's more like independent and consonant, so they could be spelled the same, and maybe they'd be spelled just like the green variations here. But we're jumping ahead. There's a fairly consistent rule in English that two consonants after a vowel change the sound from long to short, from aced to acted, where the T makes all the difference, and from hoped to hopped, where doubling the P does the trick. We're going to do a simple twist on this rule to make it better. Here are two completely different words. Really, you wouldn't know it just by looking at them, but they're pronounced bass and bass, and you would only know that when you read the word that follows it. Slam these four red letters together, and you get five possible sounds. Thought, through, do, bow, enough. Say it with me. Aw, oo, o, ow, uff. And to top it off, the G-H is silent in the first four words, but pronounced like an F in the last one. Nuff said. Let's standardize written English. The goals of this facelift are to maximize consistency, drastically minimize the need for exceptions, and minimize changes to the existing system of spelling. We'll refine how we use our consonants and vowels, and establish simple rules so anyone can spell or pronounce any word. A more consistent written language would be better for our children, quicker and easier to learn, and a boost in reading, writing, typing, and texting speeds. It could even make English a more global language. Let's make some reasonable rules and stick to them. If we do a good enough job, we can eliminate pronunciation keys, the secret decoder ring of linguistics that you see at the beginning of the dictionary or along the bottom of the pages. You wouldn't need to look up a word in order to pronounce it. We'll simply assign a single letter or two letter combination to every spoken sound. The only thing we can't do is incorporate the emphasis marks, which we can leave to the dictionaries. We're not going to change everything. Among consonants, most already have just one possible sound, 
so we only have to change a few. The first rule in our new system will be to eliminate silent consonants. The spelling of knife and pneumatic will change like this, for example. They'll change even more by the end of this video because there are more rules to come, but bear with us as the new system unfolds. Next, we eliminate irrational consonant combinations, those that can be replaced by single consonants that already have the required sound on their own, and we'll ensure that they only have that sound, regardless of what word we use them in or where in the word they appear. Phone and technique are good examples of simplifying a word. Most of our changes leave a word easily recognizable by any English speaker. Each single consonant will have one sound. For example, an F can currently sound like F as in for or like V as in of, so use V when you mean V. And a C can either sound like an S as in city or a K as in cap, so don't use the solo C for those sounds. Use the S or the K. Well, if we don't need the C to serve as an S or a K, what good is it? We could eliminate it from the alphabet, but there might be a purpose for it yet. And here it is. Let's recycle and repurpose the C for use only as the hard CH CH sound, as in cello, which doesn't require any change to its C, and chin, stretch, and two places in church. Similarly, we won't need the CH for the soft CH sound, as in charade or panache. We'll use SH, which will only have the SH sound. That one's easy to remember. Finally, we won't use CH for the K sound, as in stomach and chaos. Try it like this instead. No more CH. Let's talk about S and Z. We'll restrict S for the S sound. Sing will still be spelled with an S, but in fuse, the S sounds like a Z, so that's what we'll use. The need for this new rule is even more evident with the examples of close and close, where we can now differentiate them at a glance. Notice we've also substituted K for C here. S is also currently used to create the zh sound, as in pleasure or vision. Use the zh so we can keep the s sound pure. The q doesn't have a sound of its own, but when paired with a u or ue, stands for a kw or k sound. So just use the kw or k as shown in these examples, quit, quiche, and boutique. This frees up q for a new use, one that will be a bit harder to get used to. We decided to use Q in place of the soft TH, as in then, wither, and smooth. Continue to use the TH for the hard sound. Theft, within, and sixth remain unchanged. X usually sounds like a KS combination, as in fix, so you could replace any KS sound, like the double C's in accident, with it, and it seems natural. There are some cases in which the KS shouldn't be replaced by an X, like for making plurals. If you have more than one sack, make it clear you have sacks, not a sax. One more X factor. When X is misused for a different sound, such as in exact, xenon, or anxious, replace the X with the correct consonants. Another new rule is we rarely double consonants. The pronunciation of these words won't change by eliminating the duplicates from the ending S's or middle pairs, because the vowels will now be responsible for their own sounds. Progress, muffin, sudden. But if a doubling results from adding certain prefixes, such as in unnerve, we keep the double ends because they reflect the compound nature of the word. It's pronounced unnerve, not unerve. The Y is a special case. We'll still use it as a consonant with its existing Y sound when followed by a vowel, as in yes. And we'll still use it as a vowel, but it'll be a new vowel, as we'll describe in the next section.